works to begin on a Boitica bypass on Tuesday. Flash floods continue to affect Collie residents and progress on farm access roads in Salisbury following tropical storm Erica. I am Lurian Graham Carter with the Channel 5 News. Details coming up. Live wider awake with Beautyrest, the only mattress that combines the support of legendary Beautyrest pocketed coil technology with the comfort of air cool memory foam. Beautyrest, it's you fully charged. Available exclusively at Quartz. Quartz, bringing value home. Get serious. Get bop. now then the national cooperative credit union is the way to go get up to eight thousand dollars right now with a no for no loan go to our website at nccudominica.com for details and apply for a no for no loan at any nccu branch to get your cash right now A world leader in manufacturing for the cutting professional, Makita's very own diamond blades provide maximum efficiency for coring, cutting, and polishing all types of masonry. Another good product put out again by Makita. Longer life, durability, optimum performance. Makita diamond blades provide a powerful edge that lasts. Nothing nicer than having a good blade. Go beyond the ordinary. Go with Makita. Top in the news, work will begin on a bypass in Boitica on Tuesday. Government officials held a meeting with the people of La Plain, Delices and Boitica last Saturday at the project site. I am pleased to inform that as of tomorrow, the 22nd of September, works will commence on a bypass road at the Boitica Gorge. Uh, the plan is to, to cut a completely new road and install a 30-meter bailey bridge, uh, thereby creating access. In the first instance, we've been advised for four-wheel vehicles and possibly later on uh, for all motor vehicles. Seja has cautioned people that there will be restrictions on the project site to ensure works are done effectively. I want residents to note that works will take place between 8 a.m. and 1 p.m. and again from 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. So there would be a break between 1 and 2 to allow the residents from the area who may have traveled into La Plaine or Roseau to get back into Delhi and Boudicca. It is important to note that for those who want to get out of Delhi and Boudicca, that they should attempt to cross the area before 8 o'clock. Importantly, while that is ongoing, while the works are ongoing, we are also, by, on Thursday, we will commence works on a zip line across the gorge. Uh, we are seeking to ensure that that is put in place to ferry across provisions, supplies, and equipment while the works are taking place. He says by December, a new bridge will be redone at the site of the old Boitica Bridge. That project is estimated to last four months. Collio residents living near the river continue to be threatened by the flash floods during heavy rainfall. Idono John Baptist has this report. Tropical storm Erica has created further problems for low-lying coastal communities like Collio, where the majority of the homes are flat concrete structures. 
Concerns heightened in Collio since it rained over the weekend, causing the river to overflow its banks. Although Friday and Saturday's rainfall did not match the havoc caused by Erica, some people's yards still got flooded. Fedelin Liebler's house is one of them. Her daughter, Clivia, who lives in the U.S., is visiting and has been here since the storm. She says they are uneasy about the situation. I'm here taking care of my um, sick mom, um, Fedelin Liebler, and we are actually living in the river. And it's a great concern to us what is going to happen because it came back the second time and we were flooded for the second time. That's on the weekend? That's on the weekend, yes. So it's, um, to us, it's a great danger that something has to be done with the river and we don't know what to do. Our hands are up. They, the bug, they came and dig up the river and the, when the river comes down, it's the same. The existing defense wall can no longer provide security for homes near the river. Libla explains the day of the storm, the river had risen so high that she could touch the water from their porch upstairs. And what are we going to do with the river? What is it? Is it to break down the wall, make it a little higher? But to me, when you break the wall and make it higher, the river climbs up. We are calling for uh, maybe a heavier equipment to deal with the river, dig it up a little more. Um, maybe figure out a different way to build a wall, maybe slanted or whatever so the river don't rise. I can't sleep at night. I have to actually take something to sleep. Residents are also observing that the area requires proper dredging to at least bring temporary relief to the situation. I don't want to bash anybody because we have the um, ex excavators in the river. But what I am really concerned is the river need properly proper dredge, dredging because whenever like they really go to do something but i think to my opinion they don't have the real experience of how to go about the the, the whole thing so we, what i what i feel we need is um, some engineer who can really direct them so that we can get a proper job done and not really removing this stuff from the river and piling it on the side again. Because when the river, whenever like on Friday, when the river came down, because of the sand that was piled on the side, it took it again and then it could enter, it entered into some homes. There was not that um, great quantity of rain to cause people to be in such a fright. There are other concerns as the condition of the village post the August 27th disaster is neither the prettiest nor the healthiest. For the time being, my most concern is the water, as you all can see wrong there, is very dangerous, it's very unhealthy. Do you think that uh, your pal rep or the village council representatives are aware of the situation? Have you seen them? Have you met them to tell them about um, your concerns? I met the, the rep and I told her to come to see what happens in here. That's the pie rep? The pie rep, yes. And she, I brought her there. But what I want them to do now is to clear the place, as you can see. Senator Barco come here, pick up all them rubbish and take away and make a drain for the water to go through. When it <laughs> rains, how do you feel? Eh? You I feel scared. <laughs> Despite fears over a raging river, that very cause of devastation has been a source of aid to residents in the absence of pipe-borne water. Many people flock to the river to collect water, bathe and do their laundry. Idona John Baptist, Channel 5 News. In other news, progress is being made in clearing farm access roads in Salisbury blocked by landslides caused by Tropical Storm Erica. Farmers have not been able to access their farms in the heights of Salisbury since the passage of Storm Erica. In some cases, others drive to the point where the road is motorable and hike the rest of the way to get to their farms. A government-funded rehabilitation of some sections of those farm roads extending to Kahom was also ongoing. Heavy rains during the storm has affected to some extent work done so far. As of Friday, Parliamentary Representative for Salisbury constituency Hector John told Channel 5 News he was planning to get excavators to start the cleanup at the Salisbury Farm Access Roads by Monday. 
In the meantime, he says he is aware the Ministry of Agriculture is conducting assessments of the area and met with farmers last Tuesday. The farmers, um, you know, they have been patient with us and, and I really thank them for that. We sent up an excavator but it couldn't do the work because it needed a backhoe to clear the road for it. The dampers were skidding. Some of the landslide, we need to truck the material somewhere else. We cannot throw it overboard because it will be sent on, on, on somebody's farm. I know that they were at the Ministry of Agriculture's office in Salisbury. There is an office right there and I am sure that they were doing some of the um, reporting what the damage and assessments are being done. So I know some farms were wa washed away by, the, by landslides and the heavy rain. John says last Thursday some work was started to clear the road at Guomon, but the operator of the excavator had to divert his attention to do work at Batterley. John says the scarcity of heavy equipment has been a challenge. We have over 20 something um, landslides. Okay, but no so roads have no, collapsed. No collapse, no landslides. We have some major landslides. Um, what we did um, with the water project, we had to clear the Fonkoko area, but we have not done Timichel. The excavator we had was too big to work up in the Timichel area. We have not gone up to the, um, so we, ha we have reached as far as a place they call Atta, close to Brush, but we have not gone further and we have to go right back to Pit Makushri. Anyone out there who can call me and uh, maybe let me know that they have heavy equipment that can, we can utilize. My number is 265. 4334 they can call me because we need some of the heavy equipment to really go on the farm road. John expects to work with the parliamentary representative for the St. Joseph constituency, Kelva Daru, to address some of the access problems. We have another challenge in the car home area, Cuba area, where we have the road went um, close to Dr. Ferraro's um, property. Yeah, and collapsed. Yeah, it collapsed. Um, so we have to find another way to um, access the road and we have to utilize some of the land. I have spoken to the parep in the area, Kelvadaru, Honorable Kelvadaru, so we could collaborate on that because we have a lot of farmers from Salisbury accessing that road as well. Attorney General Levi Peter has given assurances that the Legal Professions Act and the Bail Act will take priority before year end. The Attorney General addressed the High Court at the beginning of the 2015 2016 law year. He says there are a number of existing laws to be am amended and others to be added to the statute books. He mentioned four priority areas. Uh, they are the Money, Money Laundering Act, which is um, being considered and an amendment is, is um, expected to, to uh, be made to that act very shortly. The Proceeds of the Crime Act and the two that are perhaps more germane to this particular, uh, to this, to this city uh, and those of us who are here are the Bail Act and the Legal Profession Act. I once again mention. The Attorney General says government has determined that the Bail, the Bail Act and the Legal Professions Act will be addressed by the end of the year. The Legal Profession Act, uh, a substantial amount of work has been done on that both by the Bar and by the Chambers of the Attorney General and um, I anticipate that we should be able to conclude whatever discussion but I am going to say that uh, the likelihood is that that bill will proceed um, very shortly. The Dominica State College is mourning the loss of another one of its staff. The head of the IT department, Trevor Christian, died on Saturday following a brief illness. Trevor is remembered as a competent and conscientious worker. He knew his stuff. And my department, the Office of the Registrar, we rely a lot on computer. He was helping us in the going green process. You would conceptualize it and you would put it into practice. So it is a loss for us. And it's, at this time, it's still difficult for me to speak of him in the, as a past. I still think of him being here. His office was in the same physical building as mine, so he would be the person I would see most in terms of staff. He wasn't a member of my department. He also worked long hours, and I tend to leave the office sometime after hours. And when I'd be stranded for a ride, I would get it with him, you know? And they say people say good things about people when they die. I don't think it's the case for Trevor. He was a well-rounded individual, even on a personal level, from a church community. He was supporting our parish in the music ministry, so I'll miss him for that. And I just want to say, I guess that's life. He walked into our lives. He left his impact. And we now have to ask ourselves, what lessons can we learn from his life and from his dying? The suddenness of his dying is a time a semicolon for us, not a full stop yet, to reflect on our relationship with our co-workers. Were we kind to him? 
when doing his work. Are we kind to the others who are left with us? Just this morning, soon after I got to work, the internet went down for whatever reason. If Trevor was alive, my telephone would have gone, would have rung through. Trevor, my internet is down. And wherever he was, once he had a computer access, he would have been able to solve that problem. There were things, projects left undone. I, he had emails he had not yet answered me, and he would respond to my emails good. So that means I have to now pass it on to whoever is going to succeed him to do. We have to do some adjustment, because although other people can do the work, but the thing about it, nobody will do it like Trevor did it. He was. Like each of us, he was unique. He had the knowledge, he had the scientific principle, but he did it in his own special Trevor style. Trevor Christian took up employment at the State College in 2011. He was 30 years old. Coming up, more communities and corporate citizens reach out and the Weekend Sports Awards when we return. Here's a cool way to make some quick cash with the Dominica National Lottery. Simply go to our Facebook page, facebook.com slash Dominica National Lottery and like our page. Fill out a simple form and that's it. Every week, one lucky fan will win $250. Yep, 250 big ones just for liking our page. How cool is that? So what are you waiting for? Hurry to facebook.com slash Dominica National Lottery and start winning. Draw takes place every Friday. Babe, for the next three months, make sure you use your NBD credit card. Okay, why? Because you can get a chance to win a trip for the two of us to go to Matni, Guadeloupe, or St. Lucia. A trip for two? Cool! But we need spending money. NBD will handle that. The trip plus $1,500 spending money. Nice! So, anybody can win? New and existing personal credit card customers. So you see this long book list we have? And those new school shoes, uniforms, and things we have to buy? We'll use our NBD credit card. Use your NBD credit card for purchases from now till September 30th and get a chance to win a to trip win, for two to, to Guadeloupe, Martinique, or St. Lucia. Plus $1,500 cash. Yeah. Don't have an NBD credit card? Sign up today. Conditions apply. NBD, your partner, your bank. Your bank. Your bank. It's the biggest mattress clearance event of the year. We're making room for all new models. So, for a limited time, purchase any mattress, base, or divan, and get a second one, half price. Everything must go. So, head down to Quartz now and take advantage of the biggest mattress clearance event of the year with nothing down and nothing to pay for 90 days. Only at Quartz. Quartz, bringing value home. Thank you for staying with us. The Grenada Cooperatives Bank has joined with the National Bank of Dominica in assisting those who were severely impacted by Tropical Storm Erica. The Grenada Cooperative Bank has contributed relief items to the NBD to be distributed among staff who had suffered from Tropical Storm Erica. Some of the relief supplies will also be given to evacuees at the Grand Bay Center, the community of Kulibistri, and two families in Petit Soufrié. Executive manager of the NBD's Human Resource Department had been coordinating with the Cooperative Bank in Grenada to make these donations possible. They felt our pain and in an effort to empathize and assist us, they immediately contacted 
the head of the bank, Mr. Edwards, and asked, what assistance can we give to you in this time of need? And in response, we sat together, we came together, sat and deliberated, considering the plight of our many staff members and persons in the community, and we presented them with a list of items. And within a matter of days, Grenada Co-op Bank submitted to us a tremendous response by way of some of the supplies you see here. Polydor says the contribution from the Grenada Co-op will help many needy victims recover from the effects of the tropical storm. We recognize that the road to recovery will indeed be a long one. We know Dominica has been affected the length and breadth of the country, and it will be a long and arduous journey. But with the support of corporate entities like Grenada Co-op, as well as other entities, as well as the willingness of the people of Dominica, we will make it through this difficult time. Some employees of the National Bank of Dominica were heavily impacted by the passage of the tropical storm, having to give up their homes to accommodate family members who were staying at the Dominica Grammar School. Two such employees recounted their experience. This disaster has been very trying for all of us. We have suffered loss of lives, loss of loved ones, loss of homes, loss of property, loss of livelihoods, loss of our community identity, and for some, loss of hope. The restoration of all of these things will take time, and it is a lengthy process. We are thankful today that NBD is helping to make this burden lighter for so many of us. We know the effects of the disaster are far-reaching, but we are a resilient people. We are a God-fearing people. We are a united people. My heart bleeds for my community and for my people, but we shall rise again. Unfortunately, many of my families were up there in Pidit Savan, including my two children, as Mrs. Piper said. And I spoke to them only briefly that Thursday. And the information that I received wasn't very pretty. It was a rough period for me, knowing the danger they were in, especially when I could no longer reach them by phone. After various attempts at trying to get to them, we finally decided to go by boat. I will not go into the detail about my journey. <laughs> But it was very challenging, successful, but challenging, all right? My heart goes out to everyone who lost loved ones prop and property, and to the people who may not even know what their identity is, knowing that they've lost everything that they know. Andrea Louis, Channel 5 News. The Saul Group of Companies has contributed over $20,000 worth of relief supplies to those most affected by Tropical Storm Erica. The company, through its distributors with church agencies, joined forces with its regional counterparts to distribute in phases. Phase 1 and 2 of supplies were sent from the Saul Group. We are going to do that distribution through our agents, maybe one or two of the agents in the more affected areas. So we would give it to them and they can distribute it because they would know the situation better on the ground for us. But that will be more in the more affected area. So that's the, that's the plan behind it. So that is just a, a token. I think they're working on sending us some more from the, other, from the other islands as well. Phase three will be the distribution of 215 pairs of shoes, while phase four will be a food and clothing drive from staff of the Seoul Group of Companies. In the, the corporate office and the other salt companies around, they are working on putting some more goodies together that they can send to us so we can have more to distribute to other areas that they're working on now. So as to the latest on it, I'm not too sure. The plant supervisor says they are currently in the process of delivering 120 gas cylinders to Boitica and Delices. We're really going to sling it across so the people in Delis can get some of the gas to back to the, help them to because they can't come down to town. Um, 
What we also plan to do is that one of the areas in Kulibi Street where our reseller is affected, we are going to replace the rack in the, and cylinders with gas in the value of our $10,000. So we at um, We Churches through Sol, they have joined together and we're going to try and see if we can get her back on her feet as soon as possible, maybe by next week. So. Meanwhile, Sol has taken the initiative this week to fill over 800 tanks of Petro-Caribe fuel since the company is currently in operational at its Jimit location. The community of Grand Four is playing its part in helping communities severely affected by Tropical Storm Erica to rebuild. The Grand Four Village Council has donated local food items to the community of Kulibistri. The Grand Four donation consisted of ground provision, fruits, vegetables and herbs. And as a result, I got the support of the council as well as the support of our villagers to make a contribution of local foods and fruits to the people of Kulibistri. Grand Four aims to help other communities that were severely affected by Erica. I would really like also to do the same for the people of uh, Koliho. We have already done it through the parliamentary representative to Petit Savan. The um, same provision, local foods will uh, provide, was given to them. And we intend at, um, at, uh, at my next meeting, I'm going to ask our councillors and the villagers, let us do the same to other communities that were affected. The donation was well received by the people of Kulibistri. The villagers, although there were not many on the site, but those who were there were more of the elderly persons. And I believe they were very thankful, as the gentleman said, for us coming such a long way to deliver these um, goods to them. They really appreciated it. The chairperson of the Grand of the Kulibistri, um, Kulibistri Village Council, he did appreciate it and let us know that it will be like a connection that we have established between the Kulibistri Village Council and the Grand Fund Village Council. In sports, Randolph Peltier of Exodus FC and Elijah Tate of the Dive Dominica Harlem United were awarded the male and female footballer of the 2014-2015 season. They were both awarded $500 and a bag of football gear at an award ceremony on Saturday. The Isaiah Thomas Secondary School are the champions for the third consecutive year and for the most goals for the season. Dominica Grammar School is the runner-up. DGS won Zone A, Dominica State College Zone B, and Portsmouth Secondary School Zone C. Meantime, CARICOM Ambassador Felix Gregoire encourages the DFA to seek support from FIFA in the construction of the football fields affected by Erica. Gregoire was speaking at the DFA Awards Ceremony at the Public Service Center on Saturday, September 19. The DFA should impress upon FIFA, and the President mentioned that earlier, that it is critical for it, that's FIFA, to assist Dominica in the reconstruction effort, which will include the rehabilitation or the construction of playing fields all around the island. It will be important for the DFA to stay in close contact with the government regarding reconstruction plans, and most importantly, the estimate of costs as determined by technical personnel. He added that the onus is on the DFA to keep in contact with the private sector since there will be an increased competition for resources. The private sector has been assisting in the development of sports, especially through sponsorship of leagues and clubs or teams. Therefore, the DFA must step up on its approach to the private sector since there will be more competition for scarce resources in these difficult times. Gregoire argues that sports do not get the priority they deserve since partaking in sports aids in maintaining health. Sports is very important. Sometimes we, as a people, we do not give sports the priority it deserves for various reasons. But if you are not healthy, you really cannot participate in many things. You, 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 you know that. So, unhealthiness comes a lot of us 
remain healthy because we play sports. Tropical Storm Ida and the remnants of Tropical Depression 9 do not pose any threats to the Los Angeles, but we must still check in with the folks at the main office for your weather report. Good evening viewers and welcome to tonight's weather broadcast. Here is hoping that you had a great weekend. Weak and stable conditions as a result of daytime heating and available moisture produced an increase in cloudiness across the island by afternoon. We also observed on satellite imagery tropical storm Ida in the Atlantic Ocean. However, this system poses no threat to the Les Antilles. We'll now move on to today's radar imagery which indicated a corresponding increase in shower activity, mainly across the northern half of the island during the afternoon period. Tonight's weather is expected to be fair to partly cloudy with a few scattered showers. These conditions are expected to persist into tomorrow morning. However, by afternoon, an increase in cloudiness, shower activity, and possible isolated thunderstorms are expected. Sea conditions tomorrow will be slight to moderate in open water, with waves peaking near 5 feet. And looking ahead, no significant change in weather conditions are expected over the next three days, with occasional cloudy skies and localized showers and possible isolated thunderstorms by afternoon. And across the Lesser Antilles tomorrow, partly cloudy to cloudy skies with a few scattered showers are expected across the entire chain. And on the international scene, overcast skies are expected in New York, occasional thunderstorm activity in Miami and Caracas, the chance of rain in London, and clear skies in Beijing. The sun will rise tomorrow at 5.54 a.m. and will set at 6.02 p.m. For further information, visit our website at weather.gov.dm or call the weather hotline at 447-5555. Thank you for joining us this evening. Have a good night. That's news. The headlines again. Works to begin on a political bypass on Tuesday. Flash floods continue to affect Colliho residents and progress on farm access roads in Salisbury following tropical storm Erica. You are now able to access the Channel 5 News on our Mapping News YouTube page. Feel free to contact us at news at mapping2k4.com. On behalf of the production team, I am Dorian Graham Carter. Thank you for watching and join us tomorrow.